Dear Class of 2016, It's been just a few weeks, possibly a couple of months since we last saw each other. But I think about you a lot. As a matter of fact, just this morning we began our Musser Cafe. And it was great, but I felt something missing. And of course, it's you guys. And Rosh Hashanah, of course, is a time to reflect, reflect upon the year, reflect upon all the things that we're thankful for. And obviously, I have tremendous Akar to each and every one of you for all that you brought to Hank and continue to bring to Hank through the success and learning that you're doing this year, wherever you might be, be it in Eretz Yisrael, be it in college, be it in the workplace. So I want to wish you a Shana Tova, and may you have a great year, a year of success in everything that you do. And now enjoy this beautiful Tvar Torah message from Rabbi Mezi, followed by greetings from your favorite Hank faculty. Shalom, Talmidim, and Talmidot. When Rabbi Edelman approached me and asked that I share some thoughts about the upcoming holiday of Rosh Hashanah with you, I thought to myself, what a wonderful zechut to be able to share words of Torah with you once again. I want to relate to you an experience I had as a young man after leaving high school and attending a yeshiva in Montreal. The Rosh Hashiva of the yeshiva, his name was Rav Mordechai Weinberg. He was a very unique individual. We thought of him as being more of heaven than of earth. And he had a very unique custom on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. He would have all of us, his students, line up before him, and one by one we would step in front of him, and he would offer us words of blessing, brachot. His blessing, of course, wished us a good year, but then he stopped, and he spent some time explaining to each and every one of us what he believed our true potential was. I thought many times about this custom, and I wondered why it was that on Rosh Hashanah he chose to share these words with us. And as the years goes on, go on, I believe that I am coming to a closer understanding of that custom. If we study the Torah and the way that it names the holidays, there's a very interesting contrast. See, the three festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, are referred to as the Shalosh Regalim, the three legs. When we talk about Rosh Hashanah, of course, the word Rosh is used, the head. What is the difference between the legs and the head? See, the legs, they can take you somewhere, they can take you some distance, but they're somewhat limited. If you wanted to travel across the state or across a country, you would not be able to with your legs. You'd need another mode of transportation. Similarly, the holidays, each one has its own segula, its own purpose, and it's going to work on that particular issue, then that's what you're trying to improve upon on that holiday. But that's the limit of the holiday. When it comes to the Rosh, the head, there is something very unique about the head, in that it's limitless. It has no boundaries. You see, for example, the ears, part of the head can hear. It can hear. Sonic boom can be heard for a hundred miles. The eyes, they can see. The sun, 92 million miles from Earth. And those two parts of the head are just a small microcosm of what the head can accomplish. You see, the mind can take you anywhere. The Rambam writes in Moran of Uchim that if a person thinks about Hashem, he comes in very close proximity to Hashem. The holiday of Rosh Hashanah is like the Rosh. It can take you anywhere. It's unbridled. It's boundless. So Chazal tell us that on Rosh Hashanah, the three Akarot, the three barren women, Sarah, Rachel, and Chana, were all remembered. Each one could not bear children. And yet, because of the lack of boundaries in Rosh Hashanah, they were able to come to God and plead with Him and attain something that was impossible, a child for each of them. Maybe that's the reason that our Rosh Hashiva felt it was necessary to apprise us of the opportunities and our potential on that night. Because he felt that Rosh Hashanah was a day that we could pray for anything and our potential could be reached through our desires and our prayers on that day. If that's the case, then an incredible opportunity awaits us. Rosh Hashanah is limitless, but where do we begin? The best advice that I can come up with is to look at the words of David HaMelech. We recite it each and every day in the David HaShem Ori during this time of year. 
When David Amelech is faced with the decision of what to pray for, and what to aspire to, he says the following, Achat sha'alti me'et Hashem, otavakesh. I ask one thing of Hashem, it's that that I seek out. Now listen carefully to his words. Shivti me'et Hashem kol yimei chayai. I want to dwell in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. Lachzot benoam Hashem, to gaze upon the sweetness of Hashem. Ulevaker be'echalo and to visit in his sanctuary. So David Amelach begins by suggesting he's asking God for one thing, and then he goes into a whole list of at least three things that he requests. So my Rebbe Mordechai Weinberg answered the question in the following way. He said, David Amelach really only made one request, Achat sha'alti me'et Hashem, and that is the next two words, Ota avakish, that is what I desire. God, I ask you to set my desires so that I can reach my highest potentials. Set my desires to be those desires that are in line with your desires. Otava Kesh, that's what I should truly want. What are those desires? What are those aspirations? What is my potential? Then David Amalek says three things. Shivti bevet Hashem kol yimei chayai. I want to dwell in the house of Hashem all the days of my life. I want to feel that I'm always in close proximity of you, Hashem. Even though things are tough, I want to feel you near me. Lachzot benam Hashem, to gaze upon the sweetness of Hashem. That throughout the year, through the ups and downs of, the serv of your service, I want to feel the sweetness of the service. I want to understand that each and every mitzvah is a precious opportunity. So sweet. Ulevakir be'chalo. And each day of my service should be fresh, as if I was simply visiting in your sanctuary. What an incredible opportunity for, all of us all, for us all. Dear students, each and every one of you is just brimming with potential. It's bursting to come out. This is an opportunity on this Yom Tov to beseech Hashem, to ask Him, to help you to fulfill the, those potentials, to live a life to its fullest. Seize the opportunity. And may we all be zoche to exiva v'chasima tova. Shana Tova to everybody, to the Hank family. You shall have an amazing year wherever you are, whatever country you're in. And God willing, with Hashem's help, we should all be together very soon. Hank and all of Kla Yisrael, the base of Mikdash, with everything good for all of Israel. Hey everyone, hope everyone's having a good time doing what you need to do. We miss you here at Hank, and I want you to have a great year and keep in touch. Be well. <laughs> to all of our alumni, we miss you, we hope to see you again, and we wish you a wonderful year of growth. Alumni, we miss you in the library, make sure you come back and visit, hope you're having a great time in Israel. Guys, miss you, come back and see us, <laughs> oh, yeah. and see them, because they miss you. Guys, <laughs> miss you all, I think, I'm not running after you in the hall telling you you're cutting. But Lashana Tova and have a safe and a great experience in Israel. Lashana Tova to uh, last year's graduating class. Um, school year is busy, building is full, but uh, my heart is empty. Boker Tov, I want to wish you a Shana Tova. We really miss you, and please come see us when you get back. Hey everybody, a Shana Tova. See you, Chasima Tova. We miss you guys. Come visit when you come back. Everybody should have a year full of bracha and aslach and everything that they do. To the class of 2016. We miss Amen. you guys. Hey, Dave. And um, hope to see you soon. Gentlemen, you remember this class, guys? Come on, guys. Shana Tova, we miss you very much. Hopefully, you make the most of this year and you have a good year, a productive year. We miss you. Shana Tova, Ketiva Vachtima Tova to all of our Hank alum and Eretz all. We miss you so much. Make the most of your year. Shana Tova. Bye. I just want to wish all of our alumni a Ketiva Vachtima Tova a great year. We miss you guys. Please come and visit. Hi, Shana Tova. We really, really miss you guys. And we're learning Chumash, so it's going to have to be brief. Love you all. Bye. My heart is with you wherever you go. And uh, you know how we, I cared for you. Give us the nachat, keep growing, love Eretz Yisrael, pray, learn, and then of course, keep in touch. Don't love you, Rabbi. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. And my heart is with you wherever you go. Hashem Shana Tova. Class of 2016, we really miss you here, and we're having a good year so far, and wishing you 
Hey guys, Shana Tova. I miss all of you and don't worry, they've kept the word and they've eradicated the pink zone. Have a good yet, Tiff. Hi guys, <laughs> I wish you all a Shana Tova. Daven well, learn well, have us in mind. Um, we need your Tvilos. Hi, we miss you a lot here. Hope you're enjoying it there. Hope you're learning well. And we really enjoy having the Yom Noraim in Eretz Israel. Enjoy. Hi everyone, we miss you here at Hank High School, but really glad that you're on to the next stage of your lives and really hear that you're doing great things and adjusting really nicely. Wishing you all a Tivava Chatima Tova and please, please keep in touch. We want to hear from you.